Join us, friends. Great Scott Spa Guy. Do they know what we have in store for them? They will if they tighten up. And don't double dribble. To the Grey Ghost Spa Guy? Exactly, old chum. No time to waste. To the Grey Ghost. We have not a minute to spare. It's showtime, friends. All right. Friends, this is the Spa Guy. And I'm glow trotting with Trey. And we are not wishing Cotton was a monkey. monkey. (laughs) What we're going to talk about today is James Dean. Mm. Very iconic, 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 iconic. But James never knew the height of his fame. And what's interesting is he did three films. Now, he was in some other things, but as far as a starring role, he did three films. What were the three, Trey? All right, so his big films were... East of Eden, Rebel Without a Cause, and Giant. Okay. And the so, fascinating thing, go ahead, Spy Guy. So, go ahead. The fascinating thing is East of Eden premiered in April of 1955. That's right. James Dean loses his life September of 1955. So That's he's, right. man, at a time of his life where he's, got a movie out. He's the star of a film and he has two other movies in the can that's in the editing process that he knows are probably going to be big for him. And the guy, and they did. were, yeah, he, he posthum- posthumously received re- awards for these movies, some of them. And those movies came out after he passed away, sadly. So he never knew really how famous he was, which is a very sad story. Yeah, it's a very sad story. Just, you know, knowing a process as an actor, um, it's a journey. And it's a journey of a lot of failure, a lot of standing in rooms in front of strangers and (laughs) not getting getting the role. And then along comes a little success. So I can only imagine that that type of success that he was achieving with the East of Eden and uh, with Rebel Out of Calls and, and Giant that he's already filmed, I can imagine what's going through his head as an actor, as a young actor. He's achieving his dreams, Billy, but he had not seen the, the uh, I guess, the how the, the, the club public reviewed those two films of his career. He didn't get to see it. He didn't get to hear the, the respect and, and the um, applause for it. Yeah, well, he, didn't know, he never knew that he was an icon. You know, he, he didn't get to experience being an icon. And what's interesting is you may or may not know this little tidbit. So let's talk about Rebel Without a Cause. Some famous people that were in Rebel Without a Cause that went on to be famous is a guy named Nick Adams uh, that went on to be, was it Johnny Reb that he played, Johnny Reb? I think yes. It was his I show. So. He, he had a TV show. Uh, and uh, was it uh, Natalie Wood? Natalie Wood. Okay. Uh, another one would be Dennis Hopper. Dennis Hopper was in Rebel. Okay, okay, so Dennis and uh, many of you would know Dennis Hopper from uh, from Easy Rider with uh, Henry Fonda. But Dennis Hopper, if I'm not mistaken, Dennis and Nick Adams were roommates. They roomed together. That is right. And and what's interesting is in and we could talk about Nick Adams a little bit because Nick Adams was friends with Elvis Presley to the point where Nick actually went to. Uh, Graceland spent time. He went to Audubon, spent time. He was with Elvis at the Tupelo, I think the 56, right? The very first one. 56, a year after James Dean's death. Uh, you can put Nick with Elvis in Tupelo, Mississippi. There in the- Tup- At the fairgrounds. That's pretty, that's pretty crazy. So when I say that they were good friends, they were good friends. And I believe that Nick Adams is the reason that Elvis started doing karate because Nick was friends with and studied karate with Elvis's karate instructor, uh, Ed Parker, out in Los Angeles. You can actually find early videos of Ed and Nick Adams performing karate, believe it or not, on YouTube, which is pretty crazy. Now, another little tidbit about Nick Adams is that Nick, uh, in the movie Giant, there was a scene where James Dean was drunk. And I believe that he actually came to do the scene drunk and was mumbling so much that they could not use his uh, his audio. So Nick Adams actually went back and overdubbed the audio because James had died. Oh, I never knew yeah. that. Yep. Yeah. 
I'm pretty sure that that is accurate. Well, James and, Dean definitely was a method actor. I think that's how he studied up in uh, New York City uh, when he went there. He took classes there at the acting studio, I believe is is what I remember. And uh, so, yeah, that would sound right. He really getting drunk for the role. That's what method actors really do. <laughs> <laughs> but he was so drunk that they couldn't use the audio because he was just mumbling. But that was believable. That's what it really would be like, you know? <laughs> yeah. Awesome. And, awesome. Uh, but James was just a fascinating character. Like so many people, we grew up seeing James Dean everywhere. And do you know that his estate still, the, the name James Dean, the likeness of James Dean, still creates about $5 million a year? Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. No, on, no way. On average, about $5 million a year through licensing and of products and all the different things that they do with James Dean. So it, it's very interesting. And Elvis was for like, we like to go and do Elvis stories to a place like we're also doing a James Dean story, but Elvis to us was James Dean to Elvis. Yes. So that I believe that Elvis would go tell the story about Elvis going with Nick to places around Los Angeles. Yeah. Um, and Spy Guy and I, and we've captured this place, but there's a, a restaurant that James Dean loved to go to. And so when Elvis first went out to Hollywood, Nick Adams showed Elvis around Hollywood to James Dean spots. So he took, there's definitely, I found where uh, James Dean's, I mean, Nick Adams took Elvis to that restaurant parked outside and told him that this is where James liked to come to all the time. This was where he hung out at. And Elvis was fascinated by that because that's where his idol, his Elvis, James Dean, a place that he was at once upon a time, as I say in my YouTube shows. That's right. Now, sadly, that building is gone, but you were able to use historic aerials and different things to, to determine where it was. Um, there's new apartment buildings there where it was, but there's still some old building. What was the name of that, that old motel there? Do you remember? I don't remember um, uh, what it was. I, I can see it in my real head. nostalgic looking. It looks like something from the sixties. But uh, there's a church in the background. From the fifties. There's a church in the background that's in the background of the photos of the original restaurant. So luckily, that church is still down now. There's high rises. Right, but from where we were at, we couldn't see the church on yeah. the other side. But we could fly the glory, my drone, and yeah. uh, and see those kinds of things. But um, I, I just think that, that he's an interesting character. Now, we can, we can place Elvis with, or with Nick Adams, mm -hmm. with Natalie Wood, and we believe that he even went so far. I filmed a story of them. Rebel Without a Cause was filmed up at Griffith, Griffith Observatory in Los Angeles, which is way up. Most of you have seen it. It's sitting up on the side of a, of a mountain or a hill overlooking a part of the city and we went up there and a lot of rebel without a cause was filmed up there there's even a bust of james dean up there in <laughs> fact a little side note when you're taking the road the there's a, a main drag that goes up to this observatory that's two roads that's separated by a median going one way or the other and if you've ever watched the movie vacation the very first vacation the house that they lived in is there on the right. And I found out later that that house was used in one of the later Brady movies. Okay. That was one of the Brady's lived in that house, the same exact house that was used in vacation, but that you could drive by that house on the way up to the observatory. And when you're up there overlooking the city, it is beautiful. And what's interesting is that observatory looks exactly like it did, even down to in the scenes, they're kind of up high overlooking this corner that sticks out. That's got this, uh, uh, it's, I would almost call it a turret that sticks out. There's this maybe, let's say it's eight sided or six sided. It's in a corner and it kind of sticks out. And they had one of those uh, things that you could look through to look out in the city and stuff like binoculars that you can look through and put the coin in. And that is there during the time that James is there. And it still looks very much like it did in the movie. Yeah. So I feel pretty confident that Elvis and Nick and maybe even Natalie would have gone back there 
to reenact those because Trey and I actually reenacted those moves that James Dean did there. You know, Elvis had to do that if there is definitely uh, evidence of, of Nick taking him around uh, Hollywood and Los Angeles showing him where uh, James hung out at. So I guarantee you, because Nick was a part of the scene. So I guarantee you, Nick went up to the observatory and said, hey, Elvis, do you recognize this? Oh, my God. That's that's where the knife. That's where he had the knife that came out. It, it you know, has to be it. like that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so Elvis would go watch a movie over and over and over again as well. He was uh, notorious for that kind of stuff. Well, so I'm I, sure he was fascinated by that. Another thing that I had learned about Elvis was when he first went to Hollywood for his screen test, he got off the airplane and they said that he was just like a, no, a, another tourist because he got off with a, the airplane with a camera around his neck. So, you know, Elvis went out there to, to glow trot with Elvis, you know, glow trotting with Elvis. Right. And spy guy, you know, but uh, yes, there's no doubt, Billy, just knowing that he did ride around with Nick, that I could, that had to be a place that Elvis wanted to see, because that's a yeah. big part of the scene, because I believe it's a chase scene, right? Yes. And you do see, and I believe that, don't they check the car parks over there by that area? Well, yeah, there's a scene where there's, uh, on the left-hand side of the observatory, there's kind of a circle there, and on the left-hand side, there's kind of a driveway, and he drives up that driveway. Yeah. Yeah, that's and it. um and also when he leaves he turns and goes down now you can't drive down in there but there's kind of uh walkways down to the left so i actually filmed that that's on uh, my channel i'm sure you've got some of that on your channel too. i haven't put anything out yet you haven't okay well i have that video where i go to the observatory and kind of look back at the different scenes and the different pieces of it but you could still it's still a working observatory and it's kind of like a um uh, I can't think of what you call it, but when you go in there and there's seats and you lay back and you look and they show you the different stars and the, and they tell you stories about it. What is that called? It's So it's more than having a telescope up there. They've got a giant telescope, but there's also a, um, a planetarium. Is it called a planetarium? Uh, it's something like that. Okay. It's, it's yeah. something of that nature where you can go up there and sit back and they've got a dome roof and and so he went and did that. That's in the movie, James being inside there and sitting. All those things are there. And man, when you go look at it, the doors and all of the stuff looks just like it did. It's, it's really incredible. It's amazing how we can go to places for things from the 50s, 60s, and 70s. And a lot of it's still either, it's, it's kind of two ways. It's either gone or it looks just like it did. Yeah. It's or either very gone. few changes. It's either gone in a parking lot or a high rise or a new building or it's there just like Elvis, James Dean, all of them saw it once upon a That's time. Right. What I like about the observatory is they actually, like you said, have a bust of James Dean. So they honor yes. him there at the place. Now. They honor him there. And James uh, loved to race cars. He, he had uh, several different hobbies. Uh, he was a Porsche guy. I actually own a Porsche. I have a little Boxster and the Boxster was based off of James's uh, Porsche Spider. I think it was a 550 spider from my memory. That may not be correct, but I'm pretty sure that's correct. Google it. Um, and that spider, of course, he died in. And the last time that Trey and I were in Los Angeles filming, we were in Pacific Palisades uh, in that area up off of uh, uh, Mulholland Highway over in that area. And we were going to go to where James Dean died at. But it, even that high up, we were north of Los Angeles in those areas. It was still several hours away from us. So I didn't get to go there. In fact, the James Dean stuff that I filmed so far, I haven't put out yet. But I'll probably go ahead and do it and just let that be another, another piece of the, of the story. But sadly, he was there. Um, he had, I think you studied part of this. He had uh, lunch. In Los Angeles, right? At a he certain lunch, restaurant. He had lunch with his dad. Okay. His dad worked at a garage. Is does that sound sound right, Billy? Maybe, yeah. And they they went to lunch and then at a certain restaurant. Then he went to a gas station. Then he goes a, to the gas station and the photo was captured. The photo was captured. The, is that the last photo of him alive? And that gas station now is gone. Here here's an example. The gas station is gone and it's a Whole Foods. Guys, we could build a Whole Foods anywhere. Come on. They oh, tore oh. the gas station down with the last photo of James Dean alive and build a Whole Foods there. 
Well, oh, sadly, had- we didn't get to film it before it got torn down. Right, and I think it just was torn down within the last five years. Hadn't been that long, and it we just long. we just missed it, and that's and that happens. That's why we're kind of on a quest to to film things to get to places uh, before things get torn down and before people die. I've actually set up interviews with several different people, and when I say set up, I went, you know, would you be interested in doing an interview? Yeah, I will get with me next month or, and people died. I've had three people die before I could interview them and that, that agreed to do interviews. And, uh, so, you know, we're kind of on a race against time and we're trying to capture those things. So he eats with his father, goes to the gas station and then leaves, uh, to go out to the racetrack. And instead of trailering the car, like most race cars, he was going to drive the car there. Now, a little tidbit that I've never really heard anybody say, and what I love about really digging into history and finding the real piece of the story is most people have heard the story that James Dean died in a car wreck, but most people don't know that there was a passenger with him. Did you know that, Trey? I do know that. I do know that. His mechanic was with him. And he, he lived. survived it. Yeah. He lived. And he said that James turned and looked at him and said, I don't think he sees us. And then there was the impact. Man. And so um, that's what the mechanic says. Now, what you, what's interesting is the mechanic says that he was not speeding at that time. and he, uh, But he did get a speeding ticket about two hours before that. So it had to be just as he's leaving Los Angeles because the wreck scene is about two hours our time, as far as we could drive faster now than they could legally back then. So it's about two hours from Los Angeles now. So back then the speed limits would have probably been a little lower than they were, than they are now. So it's just fascinating. And there's another gas station down the street from there that has a giant James Dean uh, mural outside I, and sadly, Trey and I have not made it there yet. And it's close to Bakersfield. It's not far from Bakersfield, California. Yeah. Uh, I do know that. And we tried to find another thing is the racetrack that he was trying to go to in the little town. Um, we tried to find that racetrack and I really couldn't find any information about it. You remember that? Yeah. We, so we've got to dig that up. Is there yeah. something? Yeah. What we're going to have to do is go to that town uh, yeah. and and ask some questions and find out where the racetrack was and all that kind of stuff. What I'm recently, go ahead. I said, what I'm hoping is Billy, that racetrack is still there. It's just grown up now. And you would be cool. Something wouldn't that be cool. Well, something that I just saw was recently was some photos of him racing in Palm Springs. Okay. So when next time we go back to Palm Springs, we need to find that racetrack. There's photos of his porch on the racetrack. You see the mountains behind it. Incredible. And all that. So <clears throat> that's pretty exciting stuff. I'm going to have to take a drink. Yeah, but James Dean is like, we, we, he's an icon. He's like Elvis. And, um, and a fascinating life when you really dig into his story because the spy guy and I, we actually uh, stopped in his hometown, didn't we, spy guy? We did. We were up in, I think we had gone to Detroit to film, mm-hmm. and we were on our way back, and we went back a different way because I wanted to go specifically to the town that he lived in, Fairmount, Indiana. And that's not the town he was born in. He was born in the next town over, and the name of that town is escaping me right this moment. But we actually went there. Will you Google that, Trey? Yeah, I will. But we actually went to both towns. Uh, But before I say that, I will tell you this. In those three movies, you remember we mentioned... Marion, that's right. And that's a, they're, they're sister towns. They're not far from each other. Marion, Indiana. That's where his mom is buried, right? That's right. We'll talk about that. So that's fascinating. So what's interesting is, is he, uh, the very first movie, East of Eden, um, came out in April of 55. So in January of 55, now you got to consider that this guy, this photographer, saw something in James Dean enough that he went on his dime. In fact, he tried to get Life Magazine to agree to buy the photographs. 
and life told him that they may or may not buy the photographs. So he went on his own dime and took these iconic photographs that are forever memorialized. If they weren't taken, there's a lot of stuff that would have never, that we would never know. And there's these iconic photographs taken by this guy. He went with, if you've ever seen the photo of James Dean in New York City where he's got the overcoat on and he's got glasses and he's kind of hunkered down like, like it's real cold. He's got a cigarette. That is this photographer. He took those photos. He went with James to his hometown Fairmount. And I think he went to Los Angeles with him as well. I think he went to all three places and took yeah. photos. Now, what's interesting is there's these photos that were taken in February, about seven months before he died in Fairmount, um, that blow my mind. And one of them is, or there's actually two sets of photographs that really blow my mind, and there's some others. One of them is him in a casket. Now, what I'm going to tell you is true. It's going to sound like I made this up. You got the photos? Y'all can see it. Yeah, I can't see it there. So if you could see those photos, but this is not visual. This is a podcast. So if you are, yep, that's him right there in a casket. So if you're listening to the podcast, just Google uh, James Dean in a casket. Those pictures were made in the funeral home that he his funeral happened at seven months later. That just blows my mind. There's also oh. photos of him at the graveyard mm -hmm. that he ended up in. Check this out, guys. That's and what. in that graveyard, that you see that little boy right there, and you see that that says Cal Dean. Cal was his great grandfather. What's funny is, or interesting is, he played Cal in East of Eden, right? Right. Or was it giant that he was cow? No, East of Eden, first one. Okay. So East of Eden is definitely cow. Yes. Yeah, so he cow, portrayed, that's cow why Trask. He, yeah, he portrayed cow in East of Eden. So just check this. Think about this. So this dude went seven months before his death, went to a funeral home and laid in a casket that he ended up there seven months later, went to a graveyard with the movie that that just came out with his movie name on it with his last name on a grave marker then the shoot was for life magazine there's photos of him with a grave marker behind him that has life on it for life magazine <laughs> right. in that same graveyard and we went there and filmed all that i haven't put that out yet but that just blows my mind man he who he had no idea seven months later he was going to be in that funeral home dead in a casket and, and in that graveyard. Buried, yeah. And buried in Fairmount. Um, so when we were leaving, and, and I'll let you take over here, when we were leaving Detroit driving, I mentioned to Trey, hey, we're going to go to Fairmount. We're going to see James Dean stuff. Never seen it before other than in pictures, and I'd studied it like that. But a lot of times, guys, what we'll do is we'll go somewhere and put our eyes on something and then we'll study it again. Because uh, for me, when I go somewhere and I can put my eyes on it, it kind of brings it to life. And so when I'm reading about something or reading a story, it just makes a lot more sense to me. And it really brings stories to life. So while we're driving, Trey has the idea to pull up a biography, but he pulled up one from 1957. Because he, and, and I agree with him, felt like something from that time period would be more accurate than someone who wrote one, set, you know, 20 years later, 30 years later. Not that that one would not be accurate, but we wanted little details from this, uh, from his time in Fairmount. So what happened is his mother died from cancer, from my memory. I think he was eight years old. They were living in Los Angeles. And his father sent him back to Fairmount to live with his mother's sister. Is right. that right? He rode and a train. Remember, he rode a train from Los Angeles. By himself. 
by himself and his mama's body was on the on the train, right? That is right. His mother's body was on that train coming back. You're exactly right about that. And he rode there by himself back home. Because she was she was buried in Marion. So he had to come back with his dead mother and him and his father never really reconciled from all of that. So he ended up living on a farm in Fairmount. And if you haven't seen those photographs, it's easy to find. It's a dairy farm. There's a big dairy barn there, a giant farmhouse, a beautiful farmhouse, a giant farm. So he ended up living there at that farmhouse. And the photo that you saw earlier from the little boy that was with him, there's another iconic photo of him pushing that little boy on a soapbox derby car. If y'all remember the cars that you would ride, there's the house right there. So if you just pull up James Dean's soapbox derby car, and that would be the derby car like the Boy Scouts or the Cub Scouts would make to race. And so that's an iconic photo that we were looking at all these photos and looking at the house and all that on the way. And uh, so anyway, we get there to the house and um, Trey had read a story about uh, something that happened inside that barn that is related to uh, you have the name Globetrotting with Trey. So let's talk about that for a moment. Yeah, so Globetrotting with Trey. I'm a basketball player. I played college basketball. My whole family's basketball. My, mom, my, my dad and my granddad. My granddad's in the uh, Hall of Fame here as a basketball coach in Alabama. My dad will be in the Hall of Fame at some points. And both of them, between them, Billy, have over 1,400 wins as basketball coaches here in the state of Alabama. Wow. And basketball is in my blood. And growing up, that was my passion. That was my love. I see a basketball behind me right now. And yeah, sure is. Oh, hey, Trey wanted to be in the NBA. Okay, Billy. So I'm disappointed that I'm not in the NBA, but I was only six foot, but I could play now. I could play. Go go YouTube me. Put Trey Miller basketball highlights. But anyway, so Glow Trotting with Trey is created because I love basketball and basketball is in my family. Well, I knew James Dean also loved basketball and I've known this. And he actually wore number three. I wore number three in high school. So when I found that story from 1957 in that book, Spy Guy, I remember I was like, look at this. James Dean's uncle who raised them there. Was it his uncle? It was his uncle. Yes. Uh, that would be it, was, it was his aunt and uncle, and the aunt was his mother's sister. Right. So, it, you know, it was his father figure. It was, you know, his uncle. And um, anyway, so James Dean's uncle built James Dean a basketball hoop, as they called it back in the day. Actually, I think two hoops in there. In the barn. So I said, In the milk barn. That's I right. I said, Billy, we're going into that barn. That's you know, right. We're, we're getting into that barn. So we pull up. <laughs> All right. We well, okay. So, so let's, let's talk about this. So, so what we're envisioning, and the reason that they built it inside the barn was Indiana is Hoosier's company, country, right? So Indiana's famous for basketball, but basketball. it's also very, very cold in Indiana. Yeah. So they built him inside the barn so he could practice during the winter. So we pull up out front, and I've never been there before, but I have friends that have gone there and filmed. Uh, 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 Jordan yeah. Lyon, uh, uh, Adam the Woo. Those guys have been there before and filmed and told stories. Um, so I knew that it was fairly friendly, but you still don't know. So the way I generally do it, Trey generally does it, is we'll pull up. And I was trying to fly, fly the glory, my drone, and I could not get it to fly. I don't know why. I don't know if there was an airport close by. I just, there was never any reason for it not to fly, but it just, it would not fly. So I got all of my stuff that I needed to just tell a basic story of the farm. And then we went and knocked on the door. So we go to the side door of that house. In fact, the photo that you just showed, if you pull up the photo of the soapbox derby car, you see a door there behind James and that door, we go under the carport there and we knock on that door right there. And this guy comes to the door, a very nice man, um, an older man. And he comes to the door and we both have cameras in our hands and we're going, Hey, you know, we're here, you know, we do YouTube videos and we would just like to, um, walk around and film if that's okay. And he said, guys, it's fine. Y'all go anywhere you want to, you film anything you want to just, you have free reign. So, uh, Trey mentioned, you know, well, what about that barn? Can we go in that barn? And he mentioned about the basketball hoop. 
So he goes, yeah, just roll that door open. You can go in there, no problem, you know, uh, no big deal. So we are about to walk away, and then I finally go, and I don't remember exactly how this went, but I said, my name's Billy, and this is Trey, and he said, my name's Marcus. And I went, oh, that kid in those photos, his name was Marcus. Are you that Marcus? And he goes, yes, it's the kid that y'all are seeing in these photos with James Dean. That's the guy we're talking to. Right. And so my mind was blown and Trace's mind was blown. Oh, so anyway, we walk over to the bar and so tell them what happened. Man, so we're like, Marcus, oh, this is so cool to meet you, man. So cool, you know. So he said, yeah, y'all go ahead. Just do whatever you want to. So we go over there and, and we're rolling camera. So this is captured. This moment is captured forever. And I said, Billy, you ready? I pulled that door. You slide it to the right. I remember I pulled it open and it was like that music starts playing like, ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. there's a basketball hoop <laughs> right in front of me. And like a, a, a light shined on it as we opened that door. And there it was. And I'm like, whoa, that was James Dean's basketball goal that is still here all these years later. Unbelievable that it is still there. Yeah. And I, it had a chain uh, net yep. on it, didn't it? It had a chain. Okay. Had a chain. So see, they would have done a chain net back then, so it, that would have been the original and net even. He spent a lot of hours in that barn playing basketball, and also I think they had a rope hung, that hung from the ceiling that James Dean would climb up for probably for strength and stuff like that. And uh, there was all right, all I have a little tidbit about that. All right. And uh, he was using like a trapeze type thing in there and knocked his two front teeth out. I didn't know that. Years later, he would tell people that it happened in a motorcycle wreck because he was James Dean. It had to be cool, right? It had to be cool, right? But that's how he knocked his two front teeth out. Yeah, Billy and I, man, we that was uh, that was like Christmas morning at filling because it you really was up to the top. Remember, we climbed that little ladder. Yeah, up. so you can go. There's stairs to if you walk through the door and go to the right. There's a set of stairs go up, and then there's a. Uh, like a loft up there in the top. There was actually a motorcycle in the loft, but it was uh, way after James Dean's lifetime motorcycle. I think from the 80s, from my memory, a Honda, like an uh, like an XR80 or XL70, something along there is on the is up in that loft. So we start going around the barn. There's antiques, guys. There's stuff from the time when James Dean was there in this barn. And I'm and I go to the left front corner. So if, where the doors are open, the stairs were to the right. The left front corner, I'm over there and Trey is filming and looking around. It seemed like there was a big trailer in there in the middle, right? Yeah, there was right Where there. the basketball goal was like a big, like a, a hay trailer yeah. right in the middle. And uh, so over to the left and I see it, it's behind something. And I go, Trey, come look. Yeah, you did do that. That, <laughs> that soapbox derby car that you saw in that photograph was sitting there. And I was like, oh my God, I can't <laughs> believe that car is here. So then my wheels start turning, you know, and I own a museum in Memphis. So I start going, hey, we've got to have James Dean's soapbox derby car for the museum, you know. So we go and finish all of our filming. We walk outside and there's photos of James outside by the milk barn. So we're doing all these lineups. So we get all of our stuff done, go back and knock on the door. And when we knock on the door, I ask Marcus, I'm like, Marcus, I can't believe it's there, but that car from that photo is there. He went, oh, that's just a replica somebody gave me like 30 years ago. Somebody made it for me, the original car. I don't know where it's at. And I was like, oh. And, and I still like, I still told him, I said, hey, it's still cool. And I would still love to have it. Yeah, the guy did a great job on it. It looks identical to. The, it was pretty darn close. Man, but man, that was James Dean's barn. And I'm just telling y'all, after you listen to this podcast or watch it on YouTube, you need to go and see this of uh, me and, and Billy capturing that moment as the door opens um, on one of our channels. I'll have to go ahead and edit that and put it out. And I'm going to put it out here in 2023. So uh, stay yeah. tuned for my stories on that. But man, that was a really cool day, Billy. And I mean, it, it has not changed much. The, the, uh, that home place at that, that the home and the barn, they've added some buildings behind, uh, uh, the barn now, but there's some cool photos of James Dean in front of that barn, walking down that little hill that you can line up. Uh, there's some standing in front of the house, standing in front of the house, uh, there at the mailbox by the mailbox. Yeah. You can see that the driveway in the background and, uh, but yeah, man, just knowing that that was where James Dean grew up 
that's where you know he lived parts of his life at and uh, probably you know there was probably it was sad times for him you know there you know when his mama passing away and he's on his own now and you know he's living now with his his family members which would become his family because marcus was his brother they were not really brothers but he was his brother um they were that he considered him a little brother exactly and we got to meet marcus i just couldn't that, that Incredible was completely guys wrong. we did not know we did not know when we knocked on that door and when we started talking to this uh, gentleman uh, and he was just as, as cool as you can be. So he definitely, he definitely um, is, is a good thing for, for his cousin or his brother, James Dean, because he, he keeps that legacy. He keeps that a legacy. Great ambassador. And he actually created a museum in town that Marcus is part of. And he told us about a motorcycle that is in that museum that while they were out in Los Angeles visiting James, he told them, hey, I bought another motorcycle so you could take that one back. His mother and father took the motorcycle apart and put it in the trunk of the car and brought it back. And it is in that museum, and um, cool. which is pretty cool. And so I didn't film in the museum, but um, I will also say this, that Marcus, I think, financially did very well because I saw a video that Jordan the Lion did where he went back and interviewed Marcus in one of those newer barns. And it was full of old antique cars and all this kind of stuff. Very cool interview. Just a cool guy. You know, what I love is a family member that values the history, values the accuracy of the history, and is willing to spend their time honoring their family member, which is exactly what Marcus did. He was very nice to us. He and was. look, we're just a couple of crazy guys showing up with cameras. He could have said, guys, y'all get out of here. Now, another little tidbit is... Um, when you leave the house and head back towards town on the right, there's a building that was the motorcycle shop that James would go buy the motorcycles from. And there was a racetrack behind it. We didn't go back there to the racetrack, but we went to the motorcycle shop. We've got to go back because there's some things that we didn't see. We also did go to the, um, we went to the funeral home. We were not able to go in because they were closed. We went to the graveyard and we show you, we went to his grave. We went to Caldeans. Uh, Caldeans, his granddad. It's either his granddaddy or his great granddaddy. We went to the one that said "Life" behind it for the Life magazine shoot. So we found all the different lineups um, that were that were there during that time. Um, another thing we did was went in town, and there was several lineups in town where you could see him standing there wearing a. Uh, he was wearing one of those. Uh, what do you call those? Those little. Uh, beanie type hat where he's talking to people and I don't know if he's signing an autograph, but what he's standing in front of, was it a barber shop? It was, yeah, it was a barber shop. And the cool thing about that town is they really embraced their James Dean uh, history with the town because they have his footsteps right there where the photo was captured. And they've done a really good job as of making sure that it was where it was captured at. Because my have. guy and I would come along and be like, I don't know about this. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they've done a really good job, I thought, Billy. With, yeah, uh, there's placards in all the different places I and footsteps that. where the there's different photos of him there. And I just, I, I'm like you, I love the, my favorite is to take an old photo and go to where it happened at and do lineups. Yeah. And that's kind of mine and Trey's well, uh, thing. We found this where his high school was that is not there any longer. And we got lucky because a really uh, cool guy um, we, that's in the back of where the school was has a barn and he had a Mayberry sign up on the top. And he was like, yeah, come on in, guys. And he gave us a part of the high school. Remember, we got yeah, to he gave that. us a brick for the museum. That's right. For your museum, you know, that's so, right. Mm -hmm. And um, that was pretty cool. And uh, I'm just thinking, like, hey, man, this is where James Dean played basketball right here on this land where the, the high school was. And things like that. And we went to the church where his funeral was. That's right. And a lot of people don't realize how athletic James Dean was. He was a very skilled athlete, a very good basketball player, uh, did very well in sports. Yeah. And they have uh, actually guys, and we found the stage, you know, they, they saved the stage from the auditorium there in, in the high school. That That's he right. And he would do plays on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's some photos of him on that stage. And the cool thing about it is, they were smart enough to, okay, we're, we're knocking down history here, guys, in this town. This is where James Dean went to school at. Let's make sure we at least save this stage where there's photos of him that he first acted on at this stage. 
they took it, I think, two blocks down the road. They brought it two blocks down the road and they put it in a park and they put like, a, I guess, a, a, um, pavilion. a, booth, a pavilion yeah. over it. And uh, it's, you can, peep, they have events there on the stage, music, probably plays, things like that out there. Yeah. And it's the ex actual stage out of the high school that James Dean would have, have acted on. Yeah. And they, and another thing that we have to experience is I believe every September at the end of September, they have a James Dean weekend or a three day events to honor his life there in that town. And people dress up as James Dean and they have his movies playing there at the local theaters and you go in the museum and I'm sure you can meet Marcus and other family members of his. And uh, so that's something that we need to uh, capture and, and, uh, film some episodes, do a podcast at some point. Yeah, I would like to go back and spend a few days there, talk to people like at the funeral home, because I'm sure the people at the funeral home where those photos were taken have a uh, have knowledge of the details of where that happened in the funeral home and that kind of stuff. Well, Spy Guy, you know, if you and I can go and spend three or four days there, there's no telling what we'll be able to uncover because we'll do the Elvis treatment with James Dean. And, you know, we did something that night that's pretty cool is, you know, I learned that story from that book in 57 that James Dean would go out and visit his mom at, his, at the graveyard at night. That's right. When he first came back into town after he got into acting. So what, what did you and I have to do? We had to go find that grave at night. And it took us about it was an hard. hour. <laughs> it took us an hour, guys, to find because it's pitch black in a, uh, in a graveyard. It's dark. And, uh. So our guy and I found that grave though, didn't we? And we stood well, when there. When we got there, it was not that, I think it was dusk when we got there. Yes, but it turned, you know. But there yeah. was some photos where you could see buildings behind it. So yeah. you could kind of pick an area that it was in. Yeah. But before we went there, we actually went to the house that he grew up in, which was a boarding house. You remember that? And yeah, they've man. got a thing there um, at the boarding house. It's a monument. Um, like a, that is a like monument. A so Trey. that is our sign that we've got about three minutes left. And three means um, three, my guy. So it's three minutes left. That's right, three minutes. So we went to the place where he lived in the boarding house with his mother. Um, and that place sadly has been torn down. But like you say, there's a little, like a little park, a little marker there. And then we went over to the graveyard and searched. And there's a main road going in. The main road is here and you turn in the graveyard, there's a road in the graveyard that goes all the way around the perimeter. And where her grave was, was on at the furthest point from the entrance on the other side, closest to the main road. It was out here on that little side, uh, on the little side street there. But it was very uh, interesting being there because we know James, it's factual that James did go out there at night to visit his mother. And we were out there at night. Now, we had to search for it where he knew where she was. But it was very surreal being there. It was. That was, I think, how we ended our trip that at, that night there in Indiana. And we drove all the way back. I think about six hours after that. But, mm -hmm. uh, man, just just walking down the, the main streets, being there in front of that barn and that house, and just kind of visualizing, you know, what could it have been like? There in fifty in the fifties when James Dean was living here, late forties I'm sure, and um, just it, it's a lot of history there, a lot of history. And yeah, I, I got to go into that museum, man. I got to see that museum. We got to go back, and we just need to go back and spend a few days there and spend time with Marcus and get the the real because the whole point of what we do with these these people is we want you to realize that these people were real people, not just icons. So we want to give them humanity by making them be real to you and to us. Because when you see people on this big screen and that's the only way that you see them, a lot of times it takes their humanity away where they don't really seem to be real people with real problems and living in a real town and a real life and all those kinds of things. They seem more like...
So I'm going to finish this way. I hit that just a hair prematurely. <laughs> so we'll finish like this. Thank you all so much for listening. If you're watching, thank you for watching. Make sure you go to Trey's channel on uh, YouTube, Globetrotting with Trey. Go to my channel on YouTube if you want to see the different videos. Uh, we will do more subjects. What is our next subject, Trey, that we're going to do? Well, Spy Guy, what, what do you want to do? You want to give me a hint? Um, right, let's, do, let's do Andy Griffith. Andy Griffith, one of my favorites, and I have a pretty cool Andy Griffith story. I, uh, I actually met him. I, we may even be able to do two episodes on Andy Griffith because we've done Andy in California mm -hmm. and in North Carolina. And I just came back from Mayberry as well two weeks ago. So I, uh, I had a really cool Mayberry trip that I captured on film for you guys to enjoy. That's right. So thank you all so much for watching. We're going to end it again. <laughs> <laughs>